Topic of our discussions now are um, opening novelties. Uh, before we go to any concrete details and start analyzing various opening innovations now and the new ideas, uh, I want quickly I want to um, explain the importance of opening novelties. Novelties, there are several reasons why they are very important. Well, reason number one and most obvious because it's a new thing, so obviously it should be better than old thing. Like in life, everything new is supposed to be better than old. So it's updating whatever variation you have novelty in. Second, the factor of unexpectancy. Your opponent is not expected it, does, did not expect it. They get confused and it has some psychological impact on him. Third, he is facing difficulties and new problems he has to solve. And most of the time, well, I would say maybe 90% of the time, your, your opponent's respond to the novelty is not the best. But you cannot create some novelty or innovation um, for the sake of innovation, whether it's good or bad, because then it's not going to be novelty. It's going to be the new move, which may be bad. So novelty move has to be, an idea has to be good, it has to be better than previous idea, and then it's going to have uh, an effect. Well, it has to be at least as good as previous idea. So let's go through some examples. On one of my tapes in the original series in the Roman Forum, I was recommending Grand Prix one of the variations of Grand Prix in Sicilian, E4, C5, Knight C3, Knight C6, F4, G6, Knight F3, Bishop G7, and Bishop B5. This is kind of key position of uh, this opening. And uh, if you play 10 games with it, chances are, actually I did run statistics that 8 out of 10 players play knight d4. This, I cannot tell you whether it's best move or second best, but it's a most common and ob obviously most popular move. Now, after knight d4, uh, I mentioned on my tape that main move is bishop to d3, but I also said that oh, possible as well is castling. And I already mentioned on a previous tapes in this series that um, the, there are two reasons why you invent novelty. One, that you are not unha you are not happy with whatever happened uh, before in this opening with the results of opening, and that's why you upgrading it. And second, that. In uh, for years now, opening opening uh, theory uh, being uh, updated and upgraded. That's what I want to do. Now, bishop d3 move that uh, I was recommending and I played myself for years is not necessarily the bad move. But what I would recommend now is castling instead. Now, castling is very, very competitive move and creates different problems for, uh, uh, for black. Well, let's see what black can do in this position. Basically, we have three moves for black in this position, e6, a6, or knight takes b5. All three of them, those are the most common moves, all three of them are, um, well, they're, they're about 
of equal value. And white has to be prepared. We have to play very accurately. So let's start with e6 move. What black wants to play is knight e7 and castle, obviously. So white goes d3, knight e7. Now what I would recommend is to take the knight on d4. Knight takes d4. Pawn takes d4. And knight to e2. Black castles. Actually, if black plays a little differently, if they play a6 instead of castle, that does not change the general plan white may have in this position. I want to play bishop a4. And here is the plan. What I would like to do, I would like to play queen e1, possibly play queen f2 and put pressure on d4 pawn, and maybe even play knight g3 and f5, trying to create an attack. So this is my general plan. Now, black, what we're going to do after queen e1, after bishop a4, so queen e1 is the plan, but it's black's move. So suppose they go d5. That's not the move can be recommended because after e5, they're going to have problem with d4 pawn. So move to expect is d6. So let's go queen e1. And maybe now something like bishop d7. Now, remember one thing here. After bishop d7, it's a bad idea for white to exchange these bishops. Because after white exchanges bishops, you're going to feel significant weakness of c2 pawn. You're going to need queen and the rook to defend your c2 pawn, and therefore you are not going to have chance to uh, launch active operations on the king side. So what you're going to have to play here is bishop to b3. Now your bishop has some offensive functions after f5, possible f5, and also defensive functions, protecting c2 um, um, pawn. So the plan is to play bishop b3 after bishop d7, and b5, then I don't know, we can go knight g3. Now we may seriously be thinking about f5. Also, you could go queen f2, threatening knight takes d4. And then after queen b6, maybe knight g3 and f5. So this is the idea, and you may play with this idea, and you're going to like it. The same thing happens if black, instead of e6 move, plays a6. It's approximately the same idea. Now, after a6, uh, white castle, black plays a6. We have to go to c4. We cannot go to a4 because we lose after knight takes f3, queen takes f3, and b5. We lose the minor piece, bishop b3, c4. So we have to go with the bishop to c4. Now, if black plays b5, again, we cannot go to b3 because knight takes knight, queen takes, and then c4. So what we have to do, so we, since we cannot retreat our bishop to b3, we have to play bishop to d5, hitting black's rook. Black moves the rook to b8, now we go d3. And if now black plays e6, it's okay to go bishop b3, since we already put pawn on d3, and c4 move is not dangerous for us. So what will happen after e6, bishop b3, knight e7, we will play knight takes d4, pawn takes d4, knight e2, and after castle, we go queen e1, with exact 
same idea. It's it's all it's similar, almost identical position with the first variation we saw. We can even go bishop d2 later and play bishop b4. Also, we have idea to play for f5. So white has relatively white has good position here. Now let's go back and look at more complicated variations. And that more complicated variation, uh, which is knight takes b5, knight takes b5 and d5, that's what kept me originally, uh, that's what kept me away from playing castle with white. Actually, castling is played. Now, let's look at it. Uh, so black plays knight takes b5, and white plays knight takes b5. Now, what I want to discuss is only d5 move. I do not want to discuss d6, because if black plays d6, white's going to go d3, then white's going to play knight c3 later, and we're going to go queen e1, queen h4, and we are not going to now go through whole opening with it because I already made a tape on it and so you can get this tape easily so what I want to discuss is reason why I didn't want to enter it the, I didn't want to uh, play castling the reason was the d5 move now since the tape I made was like six, seven years ago, a lot developed after this, and we know again, I have to repeat that uh, theory is being updated many times. After d5, there is an e5 move for white. It's been played by English players and been developed, but I don't care much about e5 move. So I want to play e takes d. And now let's look a little bit into these variations. Um, there are two moves for black here. Knight f6 or a6. Obviously, queen takes d5 is not an option because of knight c7 check. So let's look at both a6 move and knight f6 move. On knight f6 we must go c4 and we must um, maintain extra pawn. Uh, black is going to have some uh, compensation for it but I don't think this compensation is sufficient. For example a6, knight c3 castle, d4, c takes d, queen takes d4. And later on, white can go knight e5. Black will never get sufficient compensation for it, for the pawn. So, the move that is main move in this position is a6. Knight c3, and knight f6. Now what happens is black wants to get their pawn back by playing knight takes d5. And if they do, black will clearly have significant advantage. So obviously white has to stop knight takes d5. The way to do it, the only move for white to consider is d4. And knight takes d5 is the main variation, but I developed it and uh, my student Eugene Perlstein won a very convincing game on US Junior Championship. Everything was according to analysis and uh, black was black 
uh, got made it. Let me see. Let me show you what happened. D takes C. Knight takes C3. Queen takes D8. King takes D8. And B takes C3. Let's talk a little bit about this position. This position, white has an extra pawn, but white has totally destroyed um, and in a way kind of comical pawn structure. Every pawn is a weak almost. A black can easily get their pawn back and black has two bishops. What is the evaluation of this position? White is better. Now, here is why. Here, white has some invisible advantages in this position. For instance, bishop takes c3, which is the best move. Now, notice, if black does not play bishop takes c3, white is going to have outposts all over the board. For instance, if king c7, knight to d4 perfectly placed piece, and then bishop goes to e3 and rook to b1. White is going to have great position. So, bishop takes c3 move is practically forced. Now we go rook b1. Let me point something. This position, if black pawn was on a7 instead of a6, white has very bad position. With black pawn on a6, evaluation changes dramatically. And here is why. Now, black played rook b, white played rook b1, and black's normal move king c7, because they want to develop light square bishop and protect b7 pawn, king c7. And here white plays rook b3, attacking the bishop, on c3, bishop f6, or bishop g7, it doesn't really make much difference. So, let's suppose it plays bishop f6, and now bishop d2 move. This is the key move of the game. You see that white's next move, they want to play bishop a5 check, and if king comes to c6, b6 square is weak, and the rook is going to go to b6. That's why I said pawn on a7 would have changed whole evaluation of the position. Now let's see how it may develop the game. Suppose bishop e6 or bishop f5. Now, bishop a5 check, and uh, king c6. Now, why king c6 and why not why, why won't black stay out of trouble by playing king c8? Let's suppose bishop f5 is a little better move than bishop e6. Why not king c8? Now, if black plays king c8, then we have very, very interesting and unusual from strategical standpoint position. Pawns are even. Black has two bishops' advantage. White pawn uh, are very weak, isolated. Nevertheless, white has big advantage. The reason? Because when we put the bishop on b6 and the rook on d file, the black's a8 rook, actually we don't even have to put the bishop on b6, black's a8 rook will never get into game. And white is going to play knight e5, rook d1, and black, white is going to have tremendous pressure on black's position, and possibly that will develop into a very strong attack. So that's why king c6 is practically forced. After bishop a5 check, king c6. Now we're going to go rook b6 check. There is no turning back. Now black has to follow up. King c takes c5. And it looks like 
rook takes b7 is a normal move. Interesting, when I, when I looked at this position, I checked it on a computer program with the Fritz, with uh, Rebel and others, and they all give big, advan big advantage to uh, black. Then they all slightly changing evaluation until they they admit and they agree with me that uh, black is lost. Here is what may happen. Now knight to d2. Idea is knight b3. And uh, whatever black does, for example, rook d8, then knight b3 check, and on king c4, rook b4 check. Position is totally lost for black. Now, if you want to get into more details of this variation, you can explore it yourself with the help of uh, any of the engines and um, you will uh, come to the same conclusion. So, which means that variation with knight takes d5 is not good for black. Let me quickly get to the position we discussing. So what can black do? After e4, c5, knight c3, knight c6, f4, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, bishop b5, knight d4, castle. Knight takes b5, Knight takes b5, d5, e, d, a6, knight c3, knight f6, and d4. Those are the consequences of knight takes d5, we just looked. But lately, they came up with one very interesting idea for black, is the c4 move. What black does, black stays away from confrontation in its center, they bypass the spawn, they they keep d file closed and next move they want to play knight takes d5 and again they have great position but if they get there now queen to e2 i like queen e2 attacking c4 pawn after knight takes d5 queen takes c4 it's extra pawn for white so the logical move is b5. Now we go knight e5. And again, knight takes d5 is not very good because of knight c6. And uh, black must play knight c3 because if queen moves, then knight takes d5. And black cannot take neither of these white knights because of mate on e7 square. So what after knight e5, after knight, e6, knight c6, if knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, this position is not very good for uh, black. For example, queen d7, bishop to a3. Black is in serious trouble. It's mildly put. Okay, now let's see what can black do. After knight e5, move. Pawn on b5, we go knight e5. Now bishop b7. Now we can play f5. And if knight takes on d5, then f takes g followed by knight takes f7. Uh, and black probably will castle here. And white plays simply f takes g or even immediately bishop to g5. And white has very much superior position.
they have superior position. Now, again, we don't want to go into total details of it. So, you have two choices. You either take my word for it or double check yourself with uh, your computer program. In both cases, you're going to come to the same conclusion. So, let's go back. Now, what are the other ways to play for black? Again, e4, c5, knight c3, knight c6, f4, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, bishop b5, knight d4, castle. So, if they take and go knight uh, and uh, go d5, e d, a6, knight c3, knight f6. Now we go d4, c4, queen e2. c4 pawn has to be protected. And after b5, knight e5 and bishop b7, there is f5 move and only one other option a black may have here is to take on f5. But even then, is rook takes f5 uh, will put them in a very difficult position because bishop g5 and rook f1 gives white overwhelming position. And the last opportunity, last chance is to play b4, is knight e4, and after knight takes d5, we may see total disaster for uh, black here. One possible move is f6, with knight takes f6, knight takes f6, check, bishop takes f6, and rook takes f6. You see that black is crushed. Because if pawn takes, then knight c6 check wins uh, the queen. And if queen takes d4 check, then simply rook f2. This is one way. But it's also, no, uh, f6 is one tactical solution. And there is also positional solution to this problem. Is knight c5 move. You see very, very nasty knights on e5 and c5, black has a very difficult game. So that pretty much wraps up the um, castling for white in this uh, in the variation. So what I would recommend, replace bishop d3 move with a castle, as I recommended on this tape. Now, why we replacing is it because bishop d3 has some problems? Yes, in a way, yes. And I don't want to show you, I don't want to spend really time and just showing you what you shouldn't play. We do have some problems. I'm still working on them in a bishop d3 variation. I do have some problems, and I decided to put it aside for a while and concentrate on castling variation, which I just showed you. So that wraps up the Sicilian case in this, very, um, uh, uh, in this variation. Now, let's, let me give you another very, very interesting idea. It's not my idea. I just developed it a little bit. I developed it and I put some um, some thoughts around it. It's for d4 players. And it's in Queen's Gambit declined. c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6. You go bishop g5, bishop e7, knight f3, knight d7. Very, very common position in this opening. Queen c2, c6, or castle. We castled long, and a lot of times they play c6 here. It's one of the most common moves. And now e4. 
Now, why do I recommend this? Uh, for those who saw my previous tapes, what I mentioned, when you play game of chess and uh, two white and black, two sides, they castle on opposite sides of the board, you know there is a good chance of uh, uh, king side attack. No, attack on opponent's king on, from both sides. After e4, that's exactly what happens. Pawn takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, and queen takes e4. Now, what is happening here? Black's pieces are somewhat passive on c, bishop on c8, knight on d7. And what white wants to do to play bishop d3 with the tempo attacking on h7 and quickly move king side pawns. Now let's see how it may look. Knight f6. Queen h4. And now black has to take care of their development on a queen side. And also, black has to start some kind of a counterplay on queen side. Suppose they try to solve both problems in one move. They go b5. The last thing I can recommend you here to win a pawn. c takes b, c takes b, and bishop takes b5. That's a terrible idea. Because you open all the files on queen side, and that's where your king is. That's a bad idea. What white has to do, there is a golden rule in those positions. When you are attacking on one side of the board and your opponent on the other side of the board, you should stay out of contact from the side where your opponent attacks, and you should concentrate on your own attack. So, positionally correct, correct move is c5, so which eliminates counterplay on queen side, but we have an in-between move, which is very precise. Bishop to d3. Why is it in-between move? Because black cannot open the file. We just, by playing bishop d3, we're creating very very dangerous threat. The threat is bishop takes h7 check. And you see, knight cannot take on h7 because queen is hanging on e7. So bishop takes h7 is a very serious threat which black has to stop. There have uh, several ways to stop this. And then we want to play c5 and close on uh, close the position on the king side, on the queen side. So the way they can play is rook f to e8, protecting the queen, or they can play h6, rook f to e8. Now I want to go c5. Now what I'm going to do next, I see that b bishop is blocked on c8, is not good piece. Suppose black goes a5. Now I would go g4, and you see I want to go g5. And next move is knight to e5, and I continue to push my pawns. This is very dangerous position for black. It's very, very dangerous position. Now, let's go back, and uh, let's see what should black do. And let's try some best approaches for black. Black does not have to allow this position. Okay, let's see how it's going to work. d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, bishop e7, knight f3. Now, all this you're pretty much going to get if your opponent chooses queen's gambit decline. However, However, in this position, um, they can 
after castle and queen c2, they have several options. Black does not have to go c6, which enables you castling long. Black does not have to go knight d7, which enables you castling long. What black can do, they can go c5. Now I will not recommend you to play castle long. Now it's a bad idea. Because c takes d. Now if knight takes d4, e5, that's, we don't want any part of it. Now knight is going to move anywhere and black is going to play d4 and they're going to have great position. So right now you have to abandon completely the idea of castling long side. So what you have to do is to play c takes d and if e takes d just to play e3. And now c5 pawn does not look that good uh, for uh, black. And it's a slightly better position for white. Now let's try after c takes d, knight takes d5 for black. Then we have to play bishop takes e7. Queen takes e7 is not good now because knight takes d5. e takes d5. And queen takes c5. Why just won a pawn for no compensation? So you remember, you can continue and play castle uh, and castle queen side only if black plays c6 or knight d7 and black plays passively. Then you can cast a long in this case and go e4. Then you can take advantage, then you can get space advantage and which easily enables you to launch uh, uh, kingside attack, just the way we looked at. This is just an idea. I think it's a good idea. Well, it's a, it's a lot more uh, variations in, uh, it has to do with a lot more variations, but we don't want to go into deep details of it. So I want to introduce you with one other idea. In Queen's Gambit Decline, and you know, in one of the variations of Queen's Gambit Decline is Tarash. Well, actually, some people think it's also part of Queen's Gambit Decline. Some think that this is separate opening, but it does not change anything in the issue. So, d4, d5, c4, e6, knight f3, c5, c takes d, e takes d. g3, knight f6, bishop g2, knight c6, castle, bishop e7, knight c3, and castle. This is like the key position the most popular position of Tarash defense. Uh, this is not a new opening. This is not a new position. This is old position. But why would it fall in the novelties chapter? Bishop e3 is not a new move. It's an old move. But what is a novelty really? Novelty is not something that we just create for from from the bubble. No. It's been based on some principles or it's novelty a lot of times maybe a very old move when you put different ideas into it and you execute it differently and find some new ways of playing it. This may be a novelty. So this may be a old an old move with a new ideas. It's the idea that counts. It's not the move. So bishop e3, that's the uh, move I strongly recommend. That's an old move, but I want to play it a little differently than it's normally done. Well, there are basically two continuations for... Uh, black. Actually, three continuations for black. 
Before we get into Bishop E3 variation, I want to tell you what is the main move. You cannot create novelty without knowing that everything around it in the position where the novelty starts. The main move is bishop g5 in this position. Then black plays h6. Now black does not play h6. Black plays c takes d, knight takes d4, and h6. And bishop e3. So this is the key position of Tara's defense before our novelty. So what we do, we don't go bishop g5, we go immediately bishop e3. Now if black plays c takes d, we go knight takes d4, and comparing to the main variation on Taras defense, we have an extra tempo, pawn is not on h6, pawn is on h7, that in many cases it may be very, very significant. So cd is one of the moves, and I just told you that we're going to have practically extra tempo. The other two moves are knight g4 and c4, since uh, white is uh, threatening d takes c. That's a big threat. Uh, let me, let's start with knight g4 move. After knight g4, we will go bishop f4. And it's very hard to justify this knight's uh, sta knight standing on g4. It's, it's almost the best move for black now to go back. And then they just lost tempo for no reason. So the main move I would say is c4. And now we go knight e5. Let me tell you what we're trying to do with knight e5. We have two basic ideas. Idea number one I have here to take on c6 and then play b3, and if they take, take with the queen, and have uh, superiority in a pawn structure. Because you see, the c pawn is weak, rook is going to come to c1. That's idea number one. The idea number two, after knight e5, is to play bishop g5. We want to eliminate this knight on f6. And d5 pawn becomes weak. So the most common and most expected move, and probably the best move in this position, after our knight e5, is bishop e6. But now we have unexpected, it looks like most quiet position you can have, and here we have unexpected shot that gives us a better position. Knight takes c4, pawn takes c4, d5. You see that white temporarily sacrificed peace. Now they're going to get their peace back and they will have a better position. Knight takes d5, probably the best answer, and knight takes d5. Now what we have, I cannot say we have two bishops advantage because both sides have two bishops. But we may have two bishops advantage after we play knight takes e7, even though it's not our move yet. Black has weak pawn on c4. White's bishops are much more active aiming to black's queen side than black's bishops. Now, if black goes bishop f6, for example, I would want to play rook c1, and after bishop takes b2, rook takes c4. White has very strong knight on d5, and what white would want to do next is play maybe, after rook c8, maybe play rook c2 attacking the bishop, and after bishop moves back, then rook d2. You see putting rook on d file. And if queen moves somewhere, then maybe then go queen b1 and rook d1. This is, this may not be much for white, but it's clearly better position for white.
So this is more than you can get. Uh, this is more of an advantage than you can get in most of the other openings if black, if your opponent plays correctly. So this is the one of the ideas I would strongly recommend. So bishop e3 is an old move with new ideas attached to it. So this is, you can also consider it as a novelty. Let's go back to original position. And show you one interesting idea in centuries old opening. E4, E5, knight F3, knight C6, D, D4, E, D, bishop C4, knight F6. Now here, um, white, well this is the opening I am recommending for white when I play E5, but right now, uh, th th it's going to be the scotch gambit, but we discussing different uh, move. Castle. This is a very old move and it's been played many times for white and best answer for black is knight takes e4, rook e1, d5, now bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, knight c3. Now let me uh, let me update you in this, uh, t tell you more about this position. There are practically two moves for black. Queen a5 and queen h5. Queen looks like queen h5 is much stronger move because that's where queen supposed to stand. And then knight takes e4. Now, threatening all kinds of discover checks, and bishop e6. Now, with the queen on a5, if black has played queen a5 instead of queen h5, then white's best move is knight to g5. And after castle, knight takes e6, f e Rook takes e6. Now, this position is approximately equal. But if you put queen on h5, if queen was on h5, then this position would have been bad for white. This would have been bad for white. So why don't black go queen h5 instead? Oh, I'll show it to you. There is, there is a reason why black does not want to play queen h5. Because now, if white goes knight g5, then black is doing fine. They cast along and they got where they wanted to get. The problem here, queen on h5 may be trouble because of bishop g5 move. Now, bishop g5 move, now you see the disadvantages of this queen on h5. Bishop g5 stops black from castling. And if black plays h6 now, then white is going to play bishop f6. Obviously, black cannot touch this bishop because fork and black is losing the queen. You see, those are disadvantages of queen standing on h5. But if black does not know about it, if they treat queen h5 move just like queen a5 move just like queen a5 move and they still go knight g5 in this position I'm going to show you why the, where the trouble is pawn takes rook takes bishop d6 now we just saw this in uh, uh, queen's gambit decline when it's a similar threat. Bishop takes h2, and if knight takes, queen hangs. You see the reverse of the same idea. Um, uh, white queens hang. 
white so white has to do something about bishop takes h2 threat so they go queen e2 now bishop h2 doesn't work because white's queen is protected but nevertheless black is winning here after d3 now after d3 all of a sudden you can see all the problems if queen takes d3 bishop takes h2 check and rook is going to take white's queen and if pawn takes d3 then even worse knight is going to go to d4 attacking queen attacking rook queen rook and the knight on f3 knight cannot take on d4 because it's an instant mate so white can easily resign in this position so after d3 white only move is queen e4 and now knight d4 anyway you know, hold the same ideas rook hangs knight hangs pawn hangs on c2 if queen takes d4 black is winning white's queen and if knight takes d4 it's exact same checkmate so this actually happened in one game and actually game game ended in a couple of moves g4 knight takes f3 queen takes f3 queen takes h2 and you see that uh, white is uh, totally busted so i just gave you a few interesting idea what how to create novelties how to deal with them so old moves can be novelties if you uh, set it up with uh, uh, if you get some uh, new ideas uh, attached to it so that's the end of our discussion. Thank you very much and good luck.